Let me talk a little bit about Elders in Action. We're an elder advocacy group um, in, um, that work in the Tri-County area here of, uh, of Clackamas, uh, Washington, and Multnomah County. Um, we do uh, lots of things, but our main thing is to assure that we have a vibrant community through the active involvement of older adults. And I, I laughed, we had a, a picnic recently, and the people who worked there said they, they thought whenever they heard our names, they thought you'd go, elder in action. So you're <laughs> yeah. supposed to do something like that. Uh, but so I've been trying to make that our, our little motto. But they now just have me walk around like this, and I can dive in, in any phone booth <laughs> and, and be ready. So whenever there's an elder that needs acting upon, we're there. But, but our, our real key is we're creating vibrant communities and we want active involvement not only by our clients but from uh, other people in the world who want to help out in that region. So we do that through several different ways. Um, so we act as a powerful voice around. We've been actually around since 1968 and it was part of Multnomah County at that time and it was called the Commission, and what we did was uh, help, um, we helped set policy at the county, city, and state level on issues that were impacting older adults in the community. And we still have that, it's a 31 panel of, I, I say we, uh, they're, more than, they're more than advocates, they're activists, so there's, but they all have a portion, be it transportation or um, livable communities or, um, you know, uh, against abuse and, and criminal activity. But they're all very passionate on it and they help set policy at the county and city and state level. Uh, we became a private nonprofit in 1997, and the reason was for that is to give us more flexibility. When you're in the government, uh, you know, there's only so much you can do. In 97, we were able to break out of that and be able to connect with a whole group of other people and, and individuals in the community. We have a small staff. We only have uh, seven people at the moment, and that's down a little bit. And really what we do is tackle issues, solve problems, and provide opportunities. And I'll go a little bit more into that. So our services, um, one of our big one is called personal advocates. And at one time it was called ombudsman, which is a great name. Um, uh, but what a personal advocate does is one-on-one -on -one problem solving with seniors. And I'll talk a little bit more of that. We have a speakers bureau who um, go out and engage communities on topics about older adults and things that are affecting them. Um, we, and, and that has actually just got realigned and, and remodeled. Um, we have our elder-friendly business certifications. Um, and um, it, this is when businesses will come to us and say, I know who my demographics are and I want to serve them better. I'll talk a little bit more. And then the commission is what we discussed uh, on the earlier part there. And I'm an engineer, of course. So you had to have a flow chart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't make it, but I'm probably the one who's the most attached to it. So again, <laughs> we engage older adults in our community. And what we do is that if, if something's not elder friendly or working for older adults, our commissions go in to advocate for change and access. So that group is out there working on trying to make a better community. If the problem becomes much more individual, there's a person struggling in the community because of bad access or because of bad business practices, then our personal advocates uh, step in and, uh, and help out there. Um, then we also spend part of our time educating the community and businesses. And then finally, we help businesses serve the older customer through our elder friendly business. So when you look at this, it actually ties together as far as how our services work. Uh, and so so uh, personal advocates, um, we provide personal one-on-one -on -one assistance not available elsewhere. Um, so um, uh, a as someone who's 60 or older who's having problem in housing, healthcare, or criminal activity will come to us. 
Uh, we have 50 trained volunteers that will go out in the community and help them uh, put together an action plan. Um, they assist people who are having problems, as I said, in housing, health care, criminal. So this is a lot more direct. If you really like to deal one-on-one -on -one with a senior who's having a problem, and I often say, um, you know, people who are children advocates, the main thing is to get the child out of the situation, kind of protect them so they're not involved in, in what you're going forward. But with older adults, the great thing is they're very actively involved. It doesn't take too much before you're helping them and they, the light bulb goes on or they see the path and they're off and running to fix their problems. So there's a lot of reward of helping somebody just get over a barrier, get over a, uh, a circumstances and then they can go on to live their life independently. So this is probably one of our most powerful programs. Uh, we, uh, last year, we did about 3,500 cases through this. Some of it was, in, some of it was um, just referral and um, information, but we also you know, get somewhere around 250 to $400,000 back in cost avoidance to seniors might have had. So. Um, so this was the numbers for last year, uh, 3,561 people uh, um, doing problem solving, we recouped 231,000. So. Our community ed, um, so last year we did about 65 presentations throughout the community, 22,000 hours of service. We do presentations on scams and fraud, aging awareness. We talk about our program and services to try to connect. We just recently got a, a grant from the uh, Bar Association where we're able to talk about with one of their lawyers or experts to go out in the community. And so we do this very active from everything from Lions Clubs to uh, church groups to whoever, whoever is trying to uh, help their older adults in the... Uh, uh, we do a lot of tabling uh, in order to try to get the information out and um, our elder friendly business you might see this certificate around town I actually have hot off the press our 2010 uh, um, book and, and this covers everything from Les Schwab you know through um, Fred Meyer all of these people have some realization that their older adults are a big part of their business and what we do, they come to us and say, we want to make sure we're serving them well. We send out um, uh, four uh, older adults who have been trained on evaluating. They go in, they, um, they check to make sure if you were on a scooter, could you get through the aisle? Can you read the price tags? Um, can you, um, if you go into the restroom, is there enough assistance and uh, devices in there? Uh, they're, so they are trained to go in and then we give back the feedback. We kind of put it in not the secret shopper type of format, though it is kind of like that, but more of a continuous improvement. We say, this is what you're doing well, this is what's not working, and then we, we publish them. We also, um, we also license this program on a national basis, and we have, um, I think, 13 states, usually at the, na or, um, at their, their aging, uh, and we just recently have set it up in South Australia, so we went international uh, with the program. So, so uh, these are great little guides. We um, we we recommend when people call up, and we uh, it's a nice little business for us. And as I mentioned, we do everything from telephone access through web, um, which is a big one for us now. You know, there's. If you're a senior, the color of the fonts, the backgrounds, you know, rapidly changing pictures, uh, text size is a pretty easy one. We evaluate their websites for those things and then allow them to go in and do some modifications. So, so that is um, what I have on Elders in Action. Any questions on, uh, on the organization? We'll have some more time, but...